Well, Singapore has no immediate plans to develop overarching laws that directly regulate generative artificial intelligence. Communications and Information Minister Josephine Teo says existing laws already outlaw many criminal acts that draw on Gen AI. Take, for example, sextortion, where someone threatens to distribute intimate images of a victim. We can all agree that even if an image was not real, but rather a deep fake, the distress caused is enough for it to be outlawed. That was precisely what we did when we updated the penal code to introduce a specific offence of sextortion. We ensured that sextortion would be illegal with or without AI. Mrs. Teo was speaking at the Asia Tech Summit where Lithuanian Prime Minister Ingrida Simonete spoke on the importance of data-driven analytics. At a panel discussion after that, business and political leaders also discussed building trust in artificial intelligence and developing ethical models while managing regulation against innovation. The successful identification, development and validation of risk-mitigating measures is essential, and there is no shortcut. However, we believe that if we persist, we will have a much stronger basis for new laws and regulations, one that is grounded on evidence that results in more meaningful and impactful AI governance. As well, authorities have launched this new tool. Now, it's called Project Moonshot. It assesses AI applications on factors such as efficacy and accuracy to help companies and individuals understand its capabilities. These are what we call benchmarks. They ask a certain question depending on how the model answers, just like we have in exam papers, and they get an A to E rating. And that, in turn, allows you to know whether they do, they do well in a particular area, and which then gives you some understanding of how you may want to fine-tune or tweak your models. And to help us understand the significance of Project Moonshot and its role in addressing AI risks, I'm joined by Mr. Liu Chuan Hong. He's Chief Executive at the Infocom Media Development Authority, or IMDA. Thanks so much for coming in, Mr. Liu. Thank you for having now, me. Now, you are going to need to explain Moonshot to me. <laughs> I will. But before we get there, uh, Moonshot is just one of the many things that have been rolled out to address this particular risk of AI. And we just have a minister responsible ethical models in AI. What might these other initiatives be? Because there's so many, just the past year, please. Well, I think that's a great question. Um, and if I take a step back, I think there is a deep sense that AI is transformative and it will uplift the economy and society. But nobody's going to adopt AI if they don't feel it's trusted. I think, you know, uh, you must feel that there is a belief that it is a reliable tool. And I think some of the big buckets of how we try and put this into place are perhaps the first. We provided what we call a model governance framework. And it's just a basic way of thinking about what trusted AI actually means. Because it's not just one particular area, it's actually a whole system that has to come together. And the analogy I, I put is that you believe that your car is reliable uh, because they have done to make sure that the engine performs well, that the tyres perform well. Uh, and it's not just about the seat belts or the airbags. So then how do you put all of that together to make sure AI is trusted? So that was one of the things that we rolled out. Uh, we initiated the draft at the World Economic Forum at the beginning of this year. And we've been taking inputs from our global partners. And these range from uh, fellow agencies, the big model developers like OpenAI, Microsoft and Google. And we also took inputs from Singapore companies like Tomasic as well as SIA. So I think we've just finalised this as our model governance framework for Gen AI. And that really sets the base foundation as far as the framework is concerned. Um, but frameworks alone are insufficient. And that's where the toolkit, having a toolkit to then actually test that car, I think is quite key. Um, we started uh, one year ago in what we call the more traditional parts of AI. There was AI Verify as a product uh, more than one year ago. And we were, shall we say, actually pleasantly surprised that there was a lot of traction, a lot of use. It's on GitHub. It's open sourced. Many people have used it and given us a wonderful feedback. And we're pushing that adoption. Project Moonshot 
It's actually an expansion of that to go beyond classical or traditional AI into generative AI and to do the same thing as what was mentioned, to give it some measurable sense that this thing is actually safe and reliable. So that's the second big piece. But right. I think, I'm yes, please. To, uh, to, to interrupt you right here. So a framework. Uh, uh, the a, model governance the, the framework. The model governance framework, which in a way is from one end of it. Then you roll it out. But in order to earn the trust of the public and users in this framework, mm -hmm. you then have to test it exactly. in a transparent way. And Moonshot does that. If I could trouble you to give me a practical, real-life example of how this might work. Oh, as in Project Moonshot? Mm, yeah. Well, the, the simple way to describe Project Moonshot is that, you know, if you had to today train a human engineer or a human doctor, uh, one of the things that you do is you make it take uh, knowledge exams. And Project Moonshot is precisely that, to basically say, okay, if this is a particular model and I want to trust it to do certain things, maybe it's a baseline about language understanding or if it's about specific area, let's just say being an engineer, I put it through its paces through exams. And we're very familiar with exams all the way from primary school to university to qualify that engineer. And Project Moonshot is what we call a harness and the harness that allows different kind of subjects or different kind of benchmarks to be tested to show that actually that model is reliable and it's safe. But I want to make sure that there is another part of Moonshot, which is why I call, it's a little bit like a test pilot. And the test pilot that sort of puts a new plane uh, through its paces. Is it itself a test pilot or it puts... It other... allows the human being to perform the role as a test pilot, to put the actual model through its paces. And hopefully by pushing it to its extremes, you can discover things that may not quite be right and therefore uh, deal with that and address that. So I think these are the two key things. You put it through an exam set of questions, and then thereafter you put it through its paces, through slum, somewhat extreme uh, maneuvers, and use that to make the model safer. So that at the core is Project Moonshot. And building on Project Moonshot, uh, it allows you, it shows you where you might want to fine tune. Uh, are there any other areas in which you can then act to, I suppose, further add progress to the adoption of generative AI with the kind of trust you need, as you say, if there's no sign on, there's no point, however good it is. Well, I think that's a very good question. And I think there are multiple facets uh, to this. Uh, one element is to make sure that the model actually understands the cultural context. A lot of these models today uh, are reflective perhaps of the model that, or rather the data which is trained, which may be from different parts of the world. So for example, if I had to ask it a question, you know, is nasi lemak a European dish? It should try and understand what nasi lemak is and the fact that it is probably not a European dish. So I think some of these elements are required to put into the model to make it actually context specific and useful for uh, what is happening here in Singapore. And I guess ultimately, uh, it's also about training our uh, people. Uh, AI is ultimately a tool. It helps increase their productivity. And humans must be in a good position to how best to use these tools to achieve the desired outcome. We keep speaking of, I suppose, borders being removed because of multiple factors. Uh, nothing works anymore in isolation. So we look for international collaboration, international consensus on all the things that you're talking about. What's being done on that front? Um, again, that is a very good question. Um, as they always say, technology doesn't re sort of respect borders. And when it comes to AI and especially the uh, trust around AI, I think many different countries, are, many different sort of organizations are facing the same um, challenges. So I think um, we kind of need to do this at two levels. One is at the, the technical and the scientific uh, level. So I think here Singapore has done um, a fair amount of work and we want to try and shape the, the global rules and norms around some of these things, as well as help bring uh, what we call capacity building, help bring others along as far as what this means. So for example, at the technical level, uh, we have since 2022 uh, started what we call our Digital Trust Centre, which is an R&D centre that's based at NTU. And this will help advance some of the more frontier areas because in this space, it's still very nascent. A lot of it is unknown. And therefore, how do you invest in some of this R&D to really unpack 
How do you make this safer? How do you test and how do you have better benchmarks? So I think this is one critical area which we are collaborating with our counterparts from around the world, the US, the UK and so on, to advance that technical understanding. So I think that's one very important area. Um, another important area is, of course, working with the uh, open source technical community. Uh, we just signed an agreement with ML Commons to combine our forces and to push some of this understanding and adoption uh, around the world. So that's at the technical and the professional level. All right, I'm sure you will be back again at another point in the future to explain all these things moving very fast. Every time we see you, it's a completely different story. Well, I think AI is moving at a fantastic pace. And I think for Singapore to maximise the opportunities, we must make sure that we skill our people well. But as I said, at the same time, make sure that it's trusted. Because only when there's trust will people use okay. it and right. that gives maximal space for adoption. All right, thanks for that, Mr. Liu Chuan Hong, Chief Executive at IMDA. Thanks so much Thank for coming so much. this evening.